We all yearn for God's providential hand. We yearn for his providential care. The very expression that we are yearning, the implication is that we are desirous of things to be different than the way that they are. My daughter, now in her 30s, was born with, well, we didn't know what was the problem, but she was born with an abnormality, could not have the uh, synchronization to eat and breathe at the same time, and we were concerned. And So it was that on that day of her birth and the discovery of this disability that my son was with his grandmother and my wife was in the hospital because of the nature of the birth, and my daughter was at another hospital. And that night I spent uh, in prayer to my God and praying that things would be okay. And the next day we got the news, things were okay. And uh, there she is walking into her apartment uh, in what would otherwise be an impossibility in a prayer that I made when she was on the ground and the thanksgiving to my wife as she got herself up, got herself ready and went to the Easter Seals facility to work. And so we look at a, a life and I consider my heart, my heart's desire. And through that, I've learned many things. And when she was first born, I wrote some words. I'm going to share them at the end of this program that uh, put us all where we are yearning. And we ask ourselves, uh, will God provide? When Abraham was called upon to take his son Isaac, as they went forward, not having anything in their possession to offer a sacrifice, other than the command that God had given Abraham to offer up your only begotten son. And when Isaac inquired to his father, what, where is the sacrifice? Abraham said, God shall provide. And we learn in the New Testament that he had concluded that even if Isaac died that day, that God would raise him up because of the promise through his son. All the nations of the world would be blessed. So today I'm petitioning you to pray for me the Apostle Paul in Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 30, strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. And many of you, uh, as I've encountered and talked to some of you, we run into each other in the city and uh, there I am at Guillermo's Coffee, a lot of you. And it's, uh, listen, we always seek to accomplish what God would have us to accomplish. And there are many times that life brings us circumstances and we don't know how that we can get through that circumstance. Do we believe that God will provide? You know, Second Corinthians 1, he delivered us from a deadly peril. He will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. You also help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. This program, what is true, has been on the air for 25 years. The effect has been incredible. Uh, being at funerals of people that I had never met and, and being a part of people's lives because of the teaching, the bond that we have in the study of God's Word and God providing for 
them in that way a, the truth that they needed to know God's will and God's way. And we talked about that in their life as they departed this life. God is going to work in and through us. Do not be hardened in your hearts. Remember James when he talks about let him ask in faith. And if we fail to ask in faith, let us not suppose that we're going to receive anything. We have to consider the perseverance and the preservation powered by unstoppable faith. But that unstoppable faith truly is one that reaches out in that prayer of faith. Hebrews chapter 3 in verse 12. Beware lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today lest you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Powered by unstoppable faith. Steadfast to the end. That is until the point of death. Providence. Perseverance. Preservation. Powered by this unstoppable faith that is in working through us still in Hebrews now in Hebrews chapter 4 beginning in verse 11 let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest there is a confidence there is a peace there is a soul rest let us enter into that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit of joints and marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It knows there is nothing hidden from his eyes, but all things are naked and open to his eyes of him to whom we must give an account. It tells us God knows all, all the struggles, all the things that we are facing, all the things that we need to overcome. And the very next verse tells us in this disposition toward providence that we would seeing a great high priest who's passed through the heavens. That is Jesus, the son of God. And let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. For we do not have, a, we don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted like we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This working that we're yearning for and this answer that we're seeking, prayer, providential meeting, a medium that we actually activate something because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, this is to the church at Thessalonica. When you heard this word, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectively works, works in you who believe. We're talking about God working in our lives. We're asking the question, is prayer a providential medium? Is it not the basis of our prayer that we believe that God hears and answers our prayers? And there's something else that we have to equate in, is prayer a providential medium? Is we pray and God places us directly in relation with each other. Our new birth is directly related to building eternal relationships. The one I have with you. The ladies that I went and preached the funeral for during the pandemic uh, that had watched, and I guess I had become their preacher in their old age. And uh, it was rejoicing in an, an eternal relationship. And how did it come to be? Well, granddaughter calls. 
with this connection. And 1 Peter 1, 22 and 23 tells us the very birth that we have, that you have been born of the, through the Word of God. And we purified our souls in obeying the truth in sincere love of the brethren. You see how that it activates, it begins to work in us. So we are now in our prayer for the needs that we have to our God. And we're asking, hoping to answer this incredible topic. You know, it took me three, you know, five years to write the poem I'm gonna read at the end of uh, the lesson today. And it had to do with this question, does, is God answering my prayer? We don't know or we don't feel like that sometimes. But God reveals himself to us and to the world through each other. His love is perfected in us when we love each other. No one had seen God at any time. How do they know God works? No man has seen God at any time. John 17 says, neither do I pray for these alone, Jesus praying to the Father. Neither do I pray for the apostles, but those who would believe on me through their word, that's you and me, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I knew that they all may be one in us, that the world might believe that you sent me. And the world sees us in this relationship, and we're talking about that. You know, we've had two, three lessons on love. We're about to have another one on reconciliation. God doesn't intend for us to be in this fragmented condition. He intends for us to have each other. So he is praying a providential medium. God has promised to hear and answer our prayer. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So God has made this promise. And we can know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, <clears throat> my chart that I have for you, hopefully it'll stay close to the, the framing. Uh, but I want you to think. This is uh, the critical part of her lesson. We pray for our loved ones to come to the light. Paul, John, the 10th chapter, when he prayed, my heart's desire in prayer was that Israel might be saved. They had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. We pray, Jesus instructs us, you know, the necessities of life. Give us this day our daily bread. So we pray, providential medium, God tells us to pray for it. We pray for it. We pray for the welfare of others, all men, and that we could live this quiet and peaceful life. And specifically, this prayer that we offer for the president, for those in powers, positions of authority, and for the betterment, the being of all men. And also we pray for those that are suffering. And so these are the instructions. So is prayer providential medium? Well, God expects us, tells us, instructs us. And I mean, de deliver us from temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. So we pray these things. We pray loved ones come to the light. Necessities of life. We pray for the welfare of others. We pray for uh, those who are suffering. We pray for the deliverance from temptation. God speaks to us through his written word. He tells us in Colossians 4 and verse 5, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside. We pray for our food. 2 Thessalonians 3 says, if a man refuses to work, neither let him eat. So God providing for that? Well, yes, but what is God doing? Remember we said God is God. As you received the word, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God that works in you that believe, well, here we go. Yeah. The girl that needed to show up for work at a Dairy Queen and they had it on the billboard out there. She got to show up for work. Second Thessalonians 3.10. Uh, labor 
Ephesians 4, 28, we want the world to be okay. We want things to be well. Let him who stole steal no more, but let him labor with his hands that he may have to give to him who has need. So we're praying for others. We're praying for the well-being of others. We are receiving the instruction to work. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is a rather larger picture of God's providential care. When the Apostle Paul had an infirmity in the flesh, he felt that it was hindering him in his service. He felt that he needed to have this thing out of his life. And three times he goes to God in prayer for that providential deliverance, and he got it. He didn't get his infirmity fixed, though. My grace is sufficient for you. The Lord showed him he had, was, and will provide everything he must have. But that thing that was in his life was necessary and ended up to him glorifying God. And then to watch and pray. To watch and pray. Shun the appearance of evil. So God speaks to us through his word. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. The word says, watch and pray. He goes to his apostles when they are in the garden. He said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, shun the appearance of evil. So God has taken through his word and taken our words that we express to him, communicated to them, communicated to us through this word. And then we begin to see how God is functioning, at least to the part we can understand. The one thing about this topic of the providence of God and how God functions in our life is when I'm done, you may have more questions than you got answers. But you will have some answers that are definitive that you can know. So pray for loved ones to come to the light. God's working through us. And we are to walk in wisdom toward those who are outside. And the, pray for the necessities of life. <laughs> go to work. <laughs> or see, that's the thing, you know, we go to work. That is it. You get up, you go to work. You pray for the, man refuses to work, neither let him eat. Labor, that which you may give to him who has need. You pray for the welfare of others, do something. God's enabling you to do that and giving you the instructions on how to do it, expecting nothing in return. And then you pray for those that are sick and you do fully realize that grace is greater than infirmity. And in this life, hmm, limited deliverance from temptation, watch and pray, shun the appearance of evil. God working in and through us, both to will and to do his good pleasure. God shall provide the way of escape. There is no temptation that's overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will allow, not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you are able, but with the temptation will also provide the way of escape. Likewise, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 and 2, okay, consider this now. God's providing a way of escape. He's given you a guarantee, a deliverance. God works in you. God promises this. I'm preaching this morning to give you this information. Brethren, if anyone is overtaken in a trespass, and you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. God is providing. And the provisions that he is making is in and through you, even this very day, as you who are spiritual, are reaching out to those who are struggling and this is not 
everything we might be able to grasp other than the fact that when God says, when the Lord says, seek and you will find, there are people there that he has placed in these earthen vessels that allow us. In Matthew, it teaches us that if a brother is overtaken in a trespass or sins against you, you go and make the restoration. Make it happen. Do it. The power and the accessibility of God's provisions, we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the trouble with which with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 6. The power and the accessibility of God's provisions is in and through and functions through you. <clears throat> so shall his word, the Lord says, go forth from my mouth and it shall not return to me void, it shall accomplish what I please, it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Friends, is prayer a providential medium? Indeed it is. As we carry our petition before him and we know that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. And the Lord is faithful. Who will establish you and guard you and will keep you from the evil one. And he brings this, we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things that were commanded. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. There's God's providential plan and control. He's faithful, establishing you, guarding you. These are his promises, these are his provisions. The apostles, those that were speaking said, we have confidence concerning you. You're going to do this and you'll take what? The words. And when they embrace and engage those words, indeed, God is not only they're experiencing God's provisions. Those around them are experiencing the provisions provided by God. Men still choose. Our prayer is that all men come to a knowledge of the truth. Our prayer is that all come to repentance. Our prayer is that we would all be one in Christ. So that's our prayer and that's God's will. The next step, will you allow God to work in and through your life to benefit your life and the life of others? That's the question. Will you permit it to happen? Well, I've got a poem, it's a little long, but it begins this way. It is my challenge to God. That night when my daughter was in the midst of being diagnosed and we didn't know if she would live through the night or the nature of the problem or what might be expected. And then five years later, we discover we have a mental disability and it's going to be different for us. The life that we thought we would live is not going to be that way. So my prayer was for, she's just a child, Lord, and swallowed up with sorrow, though I know things could be worse. A prayer of thanksgiving is how I'll start this verse. She's just a child, but slower than others. She's grown to the age of five. Patience is now a virtue I certainly must not hide. Comfort from God's word, his wonderful guarantee that even this can be for good if I will to him lean. Tis through the sacrifice of his son I see pain can be endured. For better days are just ahead. This he has assured. It's okay to wish for things to be different than they are of the world that could have been and to wish upon a star. Worry not, he says to me, remember my servant Job? Patience is what you now need. In it you possess your soul. The end of a thing is better than the beginning, I am told. So I look at every tomorrow as his eternal pot of gold. Thank you, dear Lord, for your promises. How wonderful are your ways. 
My faith shall stand in your word alone. By your providence, I am amazed. Those great and precious promises, I know that they are true. Tis God that knows my every care, and he shall see me through. And though his ways are high and holy and far past finding out, I trust in him with all my heart, without any room for doubt. From his majestic all-seeing eye, there's nothing I can hide. My sorrows vanish at his loving word. You too are just my child. Friends, those are the things that bring us to the place where we begin to question God. When I wrote the introduction that you see at the beginning of the program, and it talks about in the midst of this world that we have this wonder of life and birth and beauty and innocence. And in the midst of that, we have chaos and things don't turn out the way that we planned. You know, the, the visions of a young man with a daughter in the aisle and all of the things that go behind that were taken. But what would God provide in the place? Well, you saw the picture. Beautiful person and beautiful people that gather around and demonstrate exactly what God accomplishes through his providential hand as we pray to him and he in turn works in and through us both to will and to do his good pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me for what is true. Have a blessed day.